Oh, we're so excited to be launching you know, here with you, Frank. Uh, I mean, look, you know, around the globe, investors are always asking, you know, how do you play the AI theme? You know, where are the ways to play it? And this is, look, this is an ETF. It's based on our research. I mean, the AI, IVES 30, and, and really showing it's not just about MAG7. It's about the second, third, fourth derivatives playing out in this fourth industrial revolution. It's a golden age for AI just beginning. All right, we want to talk more broadly. If people want to read about your ETF, we're going to have something up on CNBC Pro, a lot more great. details. Uh, Jesse Pan, I believe, always does a great job, so the they can read all about it. All right, I want to talk to you about the AI trade more in general and some of the names in your AI 30 list. One I got to talk to you about is Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of your top picks when you're looking at automotive and robotic. However, it seems like Elon Musk and the president are not seeing eye to eye right now, really criticizing his spending bill. Does that change the thesis on Tesla at all, that they're going to have a more permissive regulatory environment under the Trump administration if potentially these two guys are not getting along? Yeah. Look, I mean, first off, the best thing that ever happened from a Tesla bull and in terms of the autonomous vision is Musk leaving the White House. So, so the first off. Two, For sentiment on the stock. In terms of sentiment, in terms of the brand issues, Doge, and now you have the focus on autonomous. I mean, the, the launch in Austin, I, I believe that's going to be worth a trillion dollars alone in terms of the autonomous vision to Tesla. Look, in terms of the, the sort of beef going on between M Musk and Trump, I think it's expected relative to the energy credits and what this could mean for Tesla, as well as in terms of Musk's you know, right. reaction relative to Doge. But it does not in any way make our view any sort of negative. I think this is going to be a golden age for Musk. Wait, it doesn't change your view at all? I mean, isn't that the whole thesis that it's not really an, a car company, it's more of a software company with autonomous driving? Because we were just talking about it earlier. Um, Tesla sales down in China, I believe down about 15%. Conversely, BYD sales up about 14%. No doubt. But Frank, to me, 90% of the future value, it, it's about AI. It's autonomous robotics. And I do believe, Musk, you're going to see a turnaround in China stabilization in Europe as well as in the U.S., but what we care about, what we're really focused on, is autonomous and robotics. That's how we get to a $2 trillion market cap for Tesla. I think ultimately this is a stock that could double over the next 12 to 18 months. All right. Let's dig into some of these other names in your, your top AI 30. I would imagine um, some infrastructure companies are there. Maybe a Dell's in there. So tell me if Dell's definitely in there. And also some of these cuts, again, from the federal government. Seems like a lot of federal government influence here um, to some of its software providers and things like that. How does that impact the thesis on some of these names? Is federal government work a meaningful source of yeah. revenue? I mean, we know it is for Palantir. Palantir has a big government business. Yeah. But what about some of these other AI names as, you know, the quote-unquote modernization mm -hmm. of the federal, uh, you know, tech system is, is going on? Yeah, and you've done, you know, obviously a lot of work in that area, too. Look, to me, the modernization, it's actually bullish and positive for software. So when you think about, of course, Palantir, you look at Microsoft, you, know, you look ultimately at Oracle and others, I actually view this as software. It's a positive. Now, look, will there be cuts in certain areas? No doubt. But everything we're seeing, I think, from software to cybersecurity, you have $2 trillion that's going to be spent in the next three years. Government is going to continue to spend. I think more and more when it comes to AI, you talk about regulatory, everything happening. I do believe this is actually a huge net positive for software because of the use cases. And that's the, actually the area that the government's going to be spending on. All right, you mentioned second, third, fourth derivatives. Uh, yesterday, huge deal announced with Constellation Energy and Meta. Um, does that reshape your view maybe on how you're viewing energy names when it comes to AI and even for the IZTF? I know yeah. you can't get too much into this, but where you put energy names when it comes to top holdings? Yeah, and Aqua in there you know, is in the AI 30 relative to nuclear, the Constellation deal. I think, look, I think it speaks to our view you're going to have more and more of a convergence. Big tech, energy, how you fuel in the data centers. You're going to need six to eight X the power to fuel these data centers. But it's also my view what you're seeing here. That's just tip of the iceberg. You can't just play AI just by owning two or three names. You got to play the theme. And that's all the work that we've done around the globe to put together. It's a dynamic list mm -hmm. in terms of the AI 30. Really quick, we got to go. We showed your, your first derivatives in that board at the start, you know, NVIDIA, Microsoft. Give us your top pick when we're talking second derivatives. People are trying to get ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think, look, in turn, second derivatives, to me, it's really cybersecurity because that's where I think you're going to see more and more of the AI spent to protect the workloads. I think right now, leading on AI will be pound, you know, is obviously pound here on the software side, but you have Palo Alto, you have CyberArk, you have Zscaler, and CrowdStrike quickly coming on the AI side.